The literal worst thing that you can do for your metabolism is not eating a bunch of sugar. It's not eating a bunch of fats. Isn't that wild? We would think that the literal worst thing we could do for our metabolism is like go and eat a donut, but the reality is that our body has the ability to deal with fuels. I mean, not always perfectly, and it's not always what we wish it would be, but our body can deal with things pretty well. But there's a big caveat. You need to move it, right? And this may sound so basic that the worst thing you can do for your metabolism is be sedentary, but I'm gonna break it down in some granular detail and give you very pragmatic tips based on evidence so that you can really have some fun with this and change your life pretty darn quick. So after today's video, I put a link down below for 25% off Seed's Daily Symbiotic. I'm a huge fan. It's the only probiotic that I personally use. And the interesting thing is, is they publish a lot of their own literature. So they publish their own clinical trials. And sometimes it doesn't work in their favor, but they publish it anyway because they are honest. And that's what I appreciate about them. But interestingly enough, it's the only probiotic that has this multi-stage delivery system where it has a capsule inside of a capsule. So when you think about probiotics, it's easy to think supplement company sham. But the reality is, is there is not a whole lot more in the world of supplements that is more vetted out than probiotic usage. The problem is most are destroyed in the gut. So that's what I like about Seed is they put their money where their mouth is with their technology, with their clinical trials, and also just with overall customer service and quality products. So that link is down below for 25% off Seed's Daily Symbiotic. 150 minutes per week. That is what they claim is the healthy activity level. And I love that. I think it's great and something to strive for. But the harsh reality is that when I was 300 pounds before, I was probably getting more than that. And I know personally probably dozens of people that are getting more than that, that are still struggling with their weight and struggling with overall just metabolic function. And the reason is because I used to go to the gym and I'd work out for 90 minutes. And I was the guy on the elliptical that was trying to go all the time. But then guess what? I'd go to my corporate healthcare job and I'd go to my executive recruiter job and I'd sit on my bum all day for like nine hours drinking Monster Energy drinks and whatever, right? Sedentary, not moving, just dialing for dollars on the phone. So the point is, is that being sedentary and not having movement throughout the day is huge when it comes down to glucose management. Check out this study. The Journal of Science in Medicine and Sport took a look at subjects and it had them go ahead and do their normal sedentary life sitting for seven hours straight. And it had them do a couple of things. It had them either get up and move for three or four minutes at 60 minute intervals, at 30 minute intervals, or 15 minute intervals. They found the more frequent the intervals with just two or three minutes of light walking, the better their glucose management was significantly. It's not just a little bit, it's significant. Their 21 hour area under their curve when it came down to glucose was significantly better and their postprandial glucose management was much better. Meaning when they went down and they ate some carbs for lunch or for dinner, they were able to get their glucose back down naturally much faster than those that got up and moved every 30 minutes or got up and moved every 60 minutes. It is dose dependent on how much you move. So if you're sedentary, you just get up and do little bits of movement. But that also is true for after you consume carbohydrates. So this next study was published in the journal Diabetes Care and it looked at people that consume 75 grams of glucose. So 75 gram glucose bolus drink, like straight up gulp, gulp, gulp glucose, okay? Had them sit down for five hours. One group sat down for five hours straight without moving, which sounds like a lot, but that's, that happens all the darn time. It does. And the other group, five hours with 20 minute intervals, they'd get up and walk around for a couple of minutes, light activity. Then the third group, every 20 minutes, get up and moderate activity. Okay, both groups that moved had improvements in glucose management quite significantly. The area under the curve was much better, so their glucose was level throughout the day, and their insulin response was much better, so much less insulin floating through their system. Overall, just way, 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 way better metabolically. The group that did more intense, like moderate versus light, had a significant improvement above light. Light had significant improvement above none. So what the difference is, if you get up every 20 minutes and walk around the office for two minutes, that'll change your life. If you get up and you do some squats for two minutes, that'll change your life even more. And I don't mean you have to carry a barbell to work. I mean, you do some squats, do some air squats. You don't have to look like a total fiend though. You can just do something mild or maybe you run the bathroom and I don't know, do some squats there where people won't see it. I don't know, choice is yours. But here's what's interesting. 
it goes away fast and comes back really fast too. So there was a study published in the Journal of Applied Physiology. Okay, took a look at trained people, people that had already worked out and stuff, said, okay, for 10 days, we don't want you to work out anymore. We don't want you to be super active. Be sedentary for 10 days. After 10 days, their insulin levels doubled. 10 days of just being relatively inactive compared to being active, not only like double their, it basically reversed it. So now they had twice as much insulin floating around. They were twice as insulin resistant. The body was not able to, that is so scary because it makes me think like, okay, I'm doing all this work for years and years and years. And you're telling me if I go on vacation for 10 days and lay on a lounge chair that I'm going to erase it all. Yeah, I am. But here's the good news. One single bout of activity reversed this. One single bout of activity brought them back to pretty much where they were before. So my point in saying this is do not get discouraged. If you are not active, it doesn't, it takes one, it takes one workout. We don't know how long this might last. You could have benefits from when you were a college athlete that are raining through to you now in your forties. If you just activate it, the point is our body is resilient. And even though we talk about our body being fragile and you know, all this stuff that can affect it, it's also resilient and remembers. And if you give it the tools and the ability to do so, you can rev that stuff right back up. Now, if you want the mechanistic reason, what happens is when you are moving, you are taking glucose in, in an independent fashion from insulin. So GLUT4 transporters that bring glucose out of the bloodstream into the cell, those are insulin dependent, meaning they require insulin to grab the glucose. But if you are moving, you are triggering electrochemical reactions, essentially, like with calcium and calcium flux and all this, that is actually drawing glucose into the cell without insulin being needed. So it sounds minuscule, but if you get up and walk, the muscles suck up glucose, and that is a little bit of time that your pancreas gets a break. Because during the time in which you are walking, your pancreas doesn't have to secrete insulin because the cells take up the glucose without it. That is a much welcomed break in the world of the pancreas. We are exhausting our organs. We are beating ourselves up because we sit down and we rely on our organs to do the work. When we have these awesome muscles, no matter how big or small, that can suck it up if we just move a little bit. So I'm not asking you to go to the gym and bust your bum. I'm asking you to get off your bum and move around a little bit. If I had to choose one, I would say micro dosing activity is better than mega dosing it in the gym. And this is coming from someone that likes the gym. It's just reality. I'll see you tomorrow.